Hello everyone, it's the Bitcoin SA Bulldozer. <laughs> uh, so, you'll have to excuse me, my voice is very rugged and raspy and guttural today. My vocal tract is just seething from a rough and rugged and raspy weekend. <laughs> Enjoy. So, the title of this video is going to be Fuck Hoddle Biddle. Busting the BTC narrative. It took me a while to come up with the title. I want to be clear about what I'm doing, but I wanted to make sure that the blame was kind of pinned on something that was very emblematic of the space. I thought of the Blockstream narrative. I thought of the crypto narrative. I thought of just the narrative. But I think BTC is where it's at because the problems all stem from BTC and where it went wrong. So... Did I trigger anybody with that statement, fuck hodl? If I did trigger you, please stick around, because it's going to make sense what I'm saying. I've been talking about this problem ever since this channel started. The whole idea of hodl, pump and dump, price fixation, yada yada yada. Hodl is so emblematic of the whole space. This notion of hodl, and it became a theme... The guy who was drunk, who posted, I can't trade, I have to just hold my coins. He meant hold, but he actually said hodl accidentally. Oh, this is going to become a meme. If you haven't seen it, have a look. And in that innocent moment, a really dirty, disgusting cult formed, right? Hold on to your coins. Don't innovate. Don't do anything. Now, that actually morphed into something even bigger with the narrative of store of value and digital gold. Essentially, all three things, hodl, store of value, digital gold, are exactly the same thing. They're about sitting on an investment, in quote marks. It's not really an investment. Nothing in crypto is an investment. But it's sitting on this, in quote marks, investment and waiting for the price to appreciate. Exactly the same as hodl. Digital gold, the same thing. The idea with gold is that you sit with gold, you hold on to it. It's not really an investment gold. It's just a way of getting around price appreciation, right? Because it supposedly, the value of gold runs in line with inflation. Precious metals have had exactly the same thing done to them as Bitcoin, in my opinion. Exactly the same thing. Now, I covered this on my previous channel, and I'm not going to get into it particularly in a deep sense today, but... I think the real utility of gold and silver has been hidden to the public. We don't actually know the real utility of it. And the value of it has to do more with that true utility rather than what is portrayed just in general as the utility. Things like jewellery and even things like electronics. I think they only touch the surface of what precious metals can do. It always baffled me why these metals were so precious, were so valuable. It just didn't make any sense. And then I worked it out. The real utility is hidden. And that is exactly what happened. Because the utility of gold and silver got usurped through the fiat currencies, right? And that took us more and more away from the intrinsic value of gold and silver. When paper was introduced to proxy for gold and silver, that started the path of moving us further and further away from the utility aspect of gold and silver. And the same thing happened with cryptos. Bitcoin got sabotaged and the utility factor got taken away and then it became play money and hodl money and store of value money and digital gold money. It's not any of these things. Or at least the true flourishing of Bitcoin was taken away from the public. And what allows for that flourishing is building, is doing something, is innovation, utility, adoption, creativity, all these things. Now, people could argue, well, cryptos have been adopted. No, they haven't been adopted. I'd say this would be an interesting thing. Of the people that have actually bought Bitcoin, what percentage of that is stored on exchanges? I reckon most of it is. Probably 95%. I'll give it 95%. That might even be conservative. To me, Bitcoin 101 is creating a paper wallet sending that Bitcoin to the public address of the paper wallet and storing it there. If you haven't done that, 
you know absolutely fucking nothing about Bitcoin. Also, if you don't know the history of cryptos, the forks, what happened to Bitcoin, you know nothing about cryptos, you know nothing about Bitcoin. So getting back to the topic at hand, as you can tell, I hate this idea of HODL. I absolutely hate it. It's one of the cult narratives of the BTC space. Not Bitcoin. BTC, I call Blockstream coin. It's the whole store of value, sit on it, wait to it appreciates. Even these ETFs, they're emblematic of the HODL trope. So I brought up the original post from GameCube, December the 18th, 2013. So it's over 10 years old. I am HODLing. And there's all these misspellings in here because he was drunk when he wrote it. That's why he spelt it HODL. And that was part of the endearing factor of it. I typed that Tietl twice because I knew it was wrong the first time. Still wrong. W.E. Girlfriend's out of lesbian bar, BTC crashing. Why am I holding? I'll tell you why. It's because I'm a bad trader and I know I'm a bad trader. Yeah, you good traders can spot the highs and lows. Pit, pat, piffy, wing, wong, wang. Just like that and make a million or bucks. No problem. So it's funny as well. And in a way, it's good because what it's getting away from is the smelliness of pump and dump. So they were already doing this in 2013. I can't spot the highs and lows. I can't trade. This has already gotten away from utility. So instead of trading, people are just trading numbers. That's all they're doing. The whole thing of the space is number go up. Whether you're hodling or whether you're trading, it's number go up. But the speculative trading aspect of it is more likely to be looked down upon than this idea of HODL, where I think they're just both pathetic. They're both missing the point, and that's the utility aspect and building. So I'm going to be putting out these memes just attacking HODL every step of the way, because it's about time some of these themes got called into question. Are they actually really productive? Are they really positive? I want people to be coming onto BSV and actually creating and making this the place to play and innovate and get excited, not to just sit on your coins and do nothing, not to pump and dump. And there's so much opportunity for this. And I'll probably be covering this in my next video. We now actually have the infrastructure in BSV to start really making a chink into these narratives of the BTC cult. We don't need to worry about COPA. If we focus on this, and start prodding and start poking at things like hodl and pump and dump and whatever it is, whatever nonsense that has been created in this space that takes us away from creativity and innovation, just keep digging away at it, hacking away at it. I think that will be positive for the whole crypto space, not just Bitcoin SV. It's time that some of this stuff was called into question and seriously attacked. So please join me in this attack. Please join me in poking at this nonsense. I don't want to be famous for creating a meme. I just want the flourishing of Bitcoin that has been denied us basically since 2013, ironically, when hodling became a trope. Okay? So the first meme on this will be Biddle, right? It might be the only meme that's actually needed. Obviously, it means build, but I've flipped it around so that it's B-U-I-D-L, running in line with HODL and carrying on from there. So it's an attack on HODL. And the first saying that I'll create with this will be, fuck HODL, Biddle. But uh, maybe I'll be a little bit more polite to begin with, and then I'll start ramping it up in terms of messages, because I'm not going to just do the one message. It'll be multiple messages about biddling instead of HODLing. And I like the idea of biddling, because it sounds a bit like piddling. I'm piddling on HODL, right? <laughs> I don't care about taking credit for this. I just want this to become a meme, even if it's a small amount, even if it's a small audience, whatever havoc it creates, even if it's minute, even if it's just a little chink in the armor of this whole hodl trope, I'll have served my purpose with this. Because I want us to be the cool chain that is actually doing shit, that is building, innovating, creating, not just sitting around in their parents' bedroom with a mobile phone, looking at the screen, waiting on coin market cap for their token to appreciate in price. There was another one that I was going to do was hodling is for teenagers, biddling is for adults. And the picture would be that teenager in the bedroom with their mobile phone in the dark looking at coin market cap. And the biddling one would be an adult, maybe working out in the gym, pumping iron, looking really strong and healthy. So 
that's the idea. We're the cool coin. We're the ones that are doing things and having fun and playing with the technology rather than just sitting on it doing nothing. So did I unrile people who were riled by the fuck hoddle statement? Does it make sense now? Do you see the positive side of what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to break through. I'm trying to break stereotypes in this whole space. This is not about sitting around doing nothing. I just wanted to add an addendum here to clarify that I'm not saying you don't have your stash of BSV. Have your stash, set aside some, but take some of it and use it for utility and innovation and creativity. If you're into trading, set aside some of that for the pump and dump. But don't let those two things be the focus. Do something interesting and productive. Make this place an exciting place, something that people are doing amazing things with. Pump and dump is so boring. Charts are boring. Am I the only one that thinks this? People are not going to those charts to find out about MACD levels and Fibonacci retracements. Most people aren't anyway. There might be some that love trading. But most people are just looking at it, looking for that dopamine hit. And it's the same with HODL. Basically, you want to sit around and wait for the thing to moon. But the funny thing is that when it moons, HODLers are not going to sell at the top. They're too scared to sell. (laughs) So you'll never be rich by hodling. The way through is to actually do something productive, innovative, creative. God, how many times I have to say this for the message to get through. But I'm sure it must be getting through to some of you. Part of it is for me that I am absolutely bored with the space. It's boring unless you focus on the innovators and the creators. The whole space is boring. I don't care about number go up. I don't care about charts. I don't care about MACD levels. And I don't care absolutely about sitting on my coins and doing nothing. That's the video. Ciao.